everybody, how's it going? It is time to get back to work on this new song for the Mega 65 that uh, has gone on for several sessions now. Uh, in the last session, we finished getting the drums and the bass. In this session, we will be focused on converting the keys and the lead to SID sounds. Uh, and we will have a decision to make when we're doing the keys because we might be able to do them as ARPs or we might want to do them as separated notes. We'll see. Uh, to start with, uh, I will try the ARPs first because that's the least amount of effort. And, uh, and if that works out then uh, we'll just go with that but if not then I will go ahead and split out the chords so yeah I guess let's go ahead and stop the music uh, hold on all right so uh So, let's get Ableton loaded. I need to either put the monitor on the other side or flip my image so that it looks like I'm looking down at the data when I'm looking over at the at the screen so that it so that it looks right for the eyes. Yeah. Anyhow, so let's go ahead and give a quick listen of where we are right this moment. Uh, we are currently at two SIDs. So, let's start. That's what we've got right now. Uh, now, I want another SID chip. This does uh, the uh, synchronizing the instruments thing gets to be a bit of a pain. Sometimes I wait to do it until after I'm done, but for right now, I really don't want to do that. That's uh, just because of the extra work that it can add if I need to merge the um, when optimizing if I need to merge the different channels. Uh, okay, so that's... Let's shrink 
that down so that I can easily jump between them. Uh, yeah. My kick. That's pretty snare. Did I change anything here? I think I did. I think this was a square pulse. So, so oh, yeah. Reload so that I can see the uh, instrument I just created. That is definitely a pain. Okay, so that is those two synchronized. Let me make sure it's also synchronized with the first one still. And it is, in fact, not. So we need to add the bases. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what to do for the keys. I think just to start with, I'm actually going to look at presets, but I find that I often just go with something a lot simpler than most of these. So let's see. I'm gonna need the key part, and only the key part. Okay. Needs to be higher. Pretty cool sounding, uh, but I think I mean no, oh, that should be well, not necessarily all of them. In fact, yeah, I think I do need to drop these one.
Oh, wait a second. I do not want that there. I want it down here. This needs to point to sit number three and track one. However, I'm liking the ARP. I'm, I'm thinking that we'll experiment with some of the other patches that I've got for it. But I'm liking the, the actual instrument there. Or not the instrument, but the, the, the use of ARP. So let's try... Oh, that's not bad. I think I'm gonna move it forward though to here. Well let's let's actually start by listening to the verse. Maybe with this instrument I can go lower, because the lead is going to need that upper range. Let's... Drop all of these octaves. I wanted to start not. I uh, must have pressed stop Dutch breeze ones have too much uh, trail off. Let's try extending that release a bit so that it syncs up with The, 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 there's there's some good keys I've got in here they're the, for the presets
Okay, so I need to make that pretty sure. I think I think I'm going to go with that one. But I'm going to. Oops. Oh, I need to get rid of this the, the macros for a moment. All right. So here's the knobs. And there's coming off there. That kind of sounds a little bit more like just keys. Done with the mapping. Now what we need is an envelope. We need it on this one. That was my macro. I, I had it left on. I need to I need to reload it when I use it again. But for now, um, it interferes with what I've got going on. Uh, so yeah, I wonder. Do I have an LFO?
depth is It's not good anyway. Whoops. Oh, dear. Don't do that. Okay, you can just go away now. Come on. Okay. So, let's try... That's not MIDI. That's not going to help me. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Uh, I have one in there. It's not making enough difference to bother with this one.
Yeah, yeah, making music is pretty. that good for the keys for now. We can look at that later uh, if we want to do more with it. So what we need next is a lead again. I'm going to start with defaults. This is a special one. I got, yeah, you can see I got all kinds of leads that I've changed here. Let's, let's try out that. Anything that says Sonic Lead sounds like it's probably not good, you know. Uh, one, two, six, three. This is place number two. Sounds like these do need to be even lower, don't they? the sustain there is kind of a uh, uh, kind of a velocity because we don't have an attack or decay uh, the uh, I'm pretty sure it was based on a sonic lead yeah let's see what happens Oh yeah. So what we want, what I'm probably going to want to do next is move this once I'm not necessarily settled on the instrument for it yet, but move this onto a separate SID so that it can have its own cutoff and resonance. Because I still have one more SID I haven't touched. Well, that one's sure loud, isn't it?
Yeah, probably a hedgehog. This one, I think. But I am going to want to give it its own filter. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. That so that I have suit number four. Oops. Click four. Okay, I see. I moved the wrong thing around. That is a fat suit. This one needs to move to the other Give it some expression again. That's oh wait, you know what? I have not actually tried the range on that to see what it sounds good. So we want to clear the map, well, not clear the map, but clear the range here. So that's... Eight seven, I think, at the top.
Huh. This is this one here. Instead of that envelope, I think I am going to try another LFO here. faster than that. Let's try what, shall we? Then I think 
I mean, we have a lot of voices left that we haven't touched. Uh, like four of them, which leaves a lot of room to maybe put some... Well, once we get into stereo, we're probably going to want to use... Yeah, we're probably going to want to use two of those for the... At least, or at least going to want to double the sub. The bass you usually want in the center anyway. Uh... I might want to do the same with the lead or do some sort of ping pong with the lead. So it won't be hard to use up the voices. That's that's for darn sure. Okay. Let's let's give it a go. That is not... well, maybe it is. Most of the conversion, all that's left now is to use up the rest of the voices for effects. Uh, I guess I can group stuff together that goes together. Can't I get some a little bit of organizing here? So, let's go ahead, I guess the first thing to do is to make the base mono, that is sit number one, I think. Alright, uh, 
No, it is not on one. One is just the drums. So it's in here. Uh, the bass is, yeah. Alright, so it's those two here, which is actually kind of convenient because it means I can just grab them and copy them down to the next SID where I will use it for the um, so that the bass is mono speaking of which is about say 60 Base uses a filter. Uh, I may not be able to make the base model. Well, that's that's the way it is, I guess. Let's see how it sounds with the pan settings in place, though. Let's start. Using so much of the filter, the the filters that <laughs> now I'm not sure that I can make any of it mono if I want. I guess I could make the drums mono, I guess. But uh, yeah, all right, let's let's do that then. Oh, 
I see why that didn't happen. Sure that I got those in the right order. Yeah, it's kick and snare. You know, for the hats, maybe all I can I can easily ping pong those. So let's see. Okay. Oh, listen to that kick. done here. Listen, I think this is mostly done as far as the conversion to SID. Uh, so, yeah.
Alright. Okay, well, I think that's the, that's it for this session. Uh, yeah, we got everything done that I was hoping to. Uh, we've got all the voices used up. They're even panned, so that's great. Uh, yeah. So, the next session, we will do the export. This, um, this is a much crunchier process. It does not involve a whole lot of listening to the music. Well, it does at first, because you got to listen to it through four times to record each SID chip separately. But... After that, then it's mostly just looking at numbers and removing duplicates and stuff like that. So that's going to be back to a very crunchy, cody like process. Uh, thank you to everyone that's tuned in for the creation of the song. And yeah, we will about another session or two, hopefully not more than that, we will have an export working for the Mega 65. Uh, so, yeah, I want to make sure that I send greetings to my patrons. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate it a lot. Um, it really helps me to make ends meet. Uh, and, yeah, if you would like to help me out as well, become a patron, you can head over to patreon.com slash deathypas. Uh, in particular, I want to thank Professor Falcon and Sparehead. You guys are super cool. Uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty much most of what I'm doing for now. So, you guys have a great one, and we will see you next time.